Red Joan, out in cinemas now, starring Dame Judi Dench and Sophie Cookson. They both play the same character in different times. So we start in the year 2000 with Dench and her character, titular Joan, uh, is arrested on charges of providing classified information to Russia way, way back during and right after the Second World War. Uh, we then start to jump back and forth between her uh, interrogations, where she adamantly denies the allegations, and the past, starting in 1938, when she was at university. Uh, she was studying natural sciences and then began to work as an assistant in the project that was researching the atom bomb. Uh, tube Alloys was the code name. And as all of this was going on, we learned that she did in fact meet socialists who, some more, some less, uh, were involved with the Russian Communist Party. And she had a romantic relationship with one of those people, uh, a guy named Leo. And for the first half an hour or so, the movie is quite interesting because we as an audience are left wondering, did she, didn't she, where was the line drawn, was this only a personal relationship or did she really give up some government secrets? Now this part is quite, quite alright, uh, moves at a good pace and the switches between the timelines are fine, but then as the story progresses it kind of slows down and becomes less engaging. And then at one point the cards are on the table and we know for sure, and a large part of the suspense is just gone out the window. Unfortunately that point is not the end of the film, and so it seemed to me like the film didn't really know where to go from there. See, typically a movie will follow a three-act structure. Uh, the first act is the setup of the characters, the setting, the background of the story. Second act kickstarts the story itself, and most of it takes place inside of this part. And then the third act uh, is where the stakes are raised for the final time, there's the confrontation or a culmination, and finally the release. Uh, storytellers do not stick to this because it's lazy, but because it works, because humans are used to such story structure, and as with all familiar structures, if you want to break it, you need to have a damn good reason for it. Red Joan breaks this structure with ter terrible results. Uh, I thought about the film after I left the movie theater, and I would say it has four acts, and the first three are rather typical, but then comes the fourth, which is neither an extended epilogue nor a completely new situation, it just feels like the story just continues along because nobody said stop. And I found it difficult to care at that point, I just waited for it to be over. Uh, of course, the structure is one thing, but a huge setback is the story itself. I mean, if you make a film where a protagonist is an alleged Russian spy during World War II, you either flip it on its head and make it a villain protagonist, or you try to build a solid case for the character, show that their point of view has merit, make us root for her. Um, but the movie chooses the second route, and I think it qu it fails quite spectacularly, so there was almost nothing that would convince me to, to actually root for Joan. I found her to be a weak, uh, hugely flawed character, easily manipulated by others. I want to say this is in no way a fault of any of the actresses. Uh, both Dench and Cookson do what they can with the script, but they don't have a lot to work with. So I left the cinema thinking there was a somewhat weak film, probably a 4 out of 10 on my scale. But I did one more thing. Uh, the movie claims to be based on a true story of Melita Norwood. So I thought, all right, maybe the story was weak, but if it's real, then who am I to judge? So I looked her up on Wikipedia, and as it turns out, the only similarities are that she was also a spy, and she was also unma unmasked at an old age, and she worked for the Tube Alloys project. Everything else, all of the personal life, which in here is about 80% of the story, is completely made up. Uh, a lot of the stuff is changed or omitted from her actual life, and other things are just added out of nowhere. So claiming to have anything at all to do with that true story is a massive stretch, if not an outright lie, just to make your film look more credible. And that to me just made it all the worse. Don't watch it.